let's say you found a sample and you're all about it. And I am all about this. It's pretty. There's a little record pops in it. Really beautiful chords. It's a two chord ramp, more or less. I love that stuff. Emo is all get out. And then I want to add a little bit more to it, because that's not a song all by itself. We've seen enough artists only upload one loop and try and well, say that they made something. So let's add on to it. We found another piano loop here. Uh, oh, I'm sleeping. Psych, they're in different keys. If you bring them together, it's going to sound like garbage, even though those two are beautiful. I'll show you what I'm talking about, but maybe you've ran into the same example. Maybe not these loops exactly, but you have found two different bits of audio and they're in different keys and you've tried different ways to stretch it. You know, you can go in and you can actually stretch out the audio and that's going to lower the pitch. You can stretch it in some and that's going to raise the pitch. But I mean, by God, trying to get it accurate to a note, it's difficult. Uh, even I myself really struggle with relative pitch. So maybe you're going to end up having uh you're the perfect pitch boy, so you're going to use the pitch delay and you're going to lower all that down feedback and level all the way up and you're going to move everything down by a 16th note now. This is one method, but here's the issue. 50 is our same note. 100 feels a little bit lower than an octave. It's not exactly an octave up, which is disgusting and has pissed me off for years, so I've just been stretching and thinking, okay, well, I want this raised by maybe a fifth. That's an easy interval. I can go and kind of get on Google, try and figure out the math. Recently, this sexy gentleman has shared something that has completely changed the way I am using Audio Tool right now. We can use the Rasselbach to accomplish this exact same goal. That's right. This stupid glitch hop device. Just kidding. I love the Rasselbach. This thing can be used uh, to way more accurately uh, get us in a key because guess what? This little percentage here going from 50 to 100 is an octave. So now we have control over a whole entire scale, 12 different notes and all the nasty in between notes that we want to try to avoid. So let's see if we can get a chromatic scale out of this bad boy. Damn, that's a beat. And what we have here is walking all the way up from this C4. I think it's a C4. It doesn't say in the actual sample itself. Just a muted C piano. We're going from this an octave down all the way up. Ah, it is beautiful. So. What we can do now is bring our two samples into the same key. Let me explain this setup here really fast and how we can get everything. You're going to want to grab a Rasselbach. No idea if I'm saying this correctly, a Rasselbach. And we're going to use the scratch function here. So we're just going to take our rate. We're going to raise it all the way to a full measure because we want it to last as long as possible. And we don't necessarily want to be chopping up our sample in, in ways that we don't intend to. So we're going to take the strength, lower it all the way down to zero. This is controlling the slope of the pitch. And we want it to say at the pitch that we have assigned for it. And now tone, this is how we control the pitch right here. So we can automate this bad boy, by the way. And then we drag in our sample. So I think it would only be appropriate that we use kill a kick <laughs> which doesn't exist right now so instead we're going to go back to our chromatic example over here now you see this from 50 to about 53 percent the next step up 56 but it starts getting to be a little bit bigger of numbers you can't just go 100 divided by 12 and evenly space them because 
we function on a scale of music called equal temperament. Um, that's not really what the scale is called, but that's how we kind of divide up our notes. And it's a logarithmic. It's a scale that, well, it gets bigger as it goes up. The space between those notes gets larger because the frequencies essentially get uh, bigger in number. <laughs> so I've tried Googling this math and figuring it out myself. It comes out to be about 4.1666666 evil music uh, number repeating over and over again but it gets a little bit larger as it goes up. So actually in this project, I have all the numbers laid out for you if you wanna figure it out from our highest pitch right here, going down a half step. <laughs> and you got everything you need right here. So we have, well, first off, tried to write something in a chromatic scale. It sounds about like every chromatic song I've ever heard before in my life. So what we're working with is two different samples here that I really enjoy. That. And the whole entire beat, the other piano sample that we played earlier. Ah, this sample right here is in G major, steady, dependable G major, only one flat in this whole entire key to worry about. The other one is in disgusting, treacherous A major, and they don't play nice together, friends. So we're gonna hear them both kind of separated out here as I'm gonna be taking out everything else we don't need. It's close. I could see some of that tension being better used and, and something more jazzy, ethereal, but I don't really want that tension. I'm making trap r and I'm essentially making pop music right now. So, if this one is in A and this one is in G, well, those notes are really close to each other. If we go right here and take a peek, that is an A, that's G. We're just going down a whole step. So we're gonna take two half steps and we're gonna move it. So we got our regular C, we got our B, we got our A. So this right here is what we wanna use, this 89% mark. So that's exactly what we have, I believe that's right here, already put in on our rassle box. So let's take a peek at that. Oh. Let's hear it without. It almost works. Oh. oh, but that's just so much better. So, now we have some glorious drum samples here. And I really like this 808. This fits, it makes it trashy and emo, kind of what I'm looking for, but 808s are tuned. And that's not in G major, friends. That's in C sharp major, I believe. So that is going to be lowered as well. I have these set up to about 71% as we're taking them down, but then listen to what happens with the rhythm here. Now that's a nice little mistake. That almost sounds like it's going in triplets, but it's not. It's a little it's a little bit fucked if we're being honest. So we have these all set up to be on fourth uh, quarter notes. We can take it and lower it to an eighth. So it's a little bit more stuck to the grid and isn't doing as much, but oh, that 808 sounds like it has some questions for us. Ooh. <laughs> We don't want that, so let's go ahead and clear out this bad boy. Let's take him back to quarter notes. I felt like that worked pretty well, and even though we were working with nothing but samples, we have to do some editing. I am so sorry. So I have taken out all those hi-hats, because that's really where it's screwed. And I want to keep some of the kicks, some of the snares that are more on the grid. Oh. 
Unfortunately, some of those hi-hats are still super glued in there. So we're gonna add in some of our own drums. We got a kick and a snare right here, just a hi-hat loop that was found. And now that our 808s are tuned, it's just a whole lot better. It just, it goes together because it's harmonious, of course. You want to keep an ear and an eye out for things like this whenever you are just doing loop-based production because it's fine, you can accomplish a lot really fast, but if you're not paying attention, you can run into a lot larger of issues. So this Rasselbach method, once again, mwah, hats off, God bless, never would have thought about it myself. Try it out yourself.